Five. And whoops, this is a problem. The bishop is attacking the rook on h2. We are getting getting to the finish, I'm afraid. And uh, the big question though is after bishop f5, g6, it looks to my G6. eyes to be a killer. And 10 seconds for Lei Tingj and well, she gives a check, but the king is going to hide away on g4. Well, that's the case. I'm just wondering if there's any more, any tricks on the board. Well, there is, of course. No, I thought <laughs> to play uh, bishop f7, rook g7, king e6. But f5. Yeah. But rook and... h7 would be a blunder. Mm -hmm. 25 seconds for Leiting J. And Ju Wenjun's big threat on the board is simply to play rook takes bishop and then walk the h pawn through to h8. And well, she puts the rook at the bottom. And hang on a second, isn't rook takes g6? going to win the game on the spot that's the case that's the case and uh, Ju Wenjun taking she a pause it. just doing some final calculations before she executes the move and it's there on the board and pawn takes rook at h7 and that is it. We see a handshake from Lei Ting Jie. She resigns. And wow, what a game from Ju Wen Jun as she equalizes the match in this really instructive Rick and Bishop endgame. It was an absolutely topsy turvy game in game eight of the World Women's Fiddle Chess Championship. Ju Wen Jun started with the Reti opening this time. She was uh, lagging behind by one point in the match. D5, E3, C5, B3, and uh, she gets a very playable position, like uh, outsmarting the preparation, like avoiding the preparation of Lee Tanji. Ju Wenjun just uh, castles here, and after knight f6, knight d2, bishop d6, c4, it looks very comfortable for white with those uh, center pawns. Good center control. Castles and a3. If you give her the chance, she would play b4, c5 and just uh, do a nice pawn storm over here with pieces supporting. So, Li Tanji plays a5, just uh, stopping b4 for now. h3, bishop back and queen e2. Quiet move, is developing. Rook c1 takes and takes. So, hanging pawns in the center, but they cover a lot of squares. Bishop goes back, queen e3. Now, rook c8 and rook e1. So, both sides complete... Uh, Rerouting the pieces to good squares, and now Ju Wenjun goes for middle game plan. She is going to launch an attack on the queen side. She has a target in sight, b7. She's gonna gain space there and land pieces there and attack the weakness on a5. Queen b8, and necessity basically because pawn c5 was coming and knight c4 was coming, and d5 was also in the air, which is why the queen had to retreat. Pawn c5, knight d5, and knight c4. a4, a very interesting pawn sacrifice by Li Tanji. So, so she reacts in a very active way. She would not want to, she's the sort of a player who wouldn't want to defend passively. So she goes a4. The idea is after takes b5, a lot of exchanges happen. And it leads to an endgame, sort of an endgame if the queens come off, where the pawn is very weak on a3. So that was, that's her idea to liquidate the position. Bishop a1 and now queen a5. Almost forcing an exchange of queen because a3 would hang if the queen moves away. So takes, takes, and a pawn and game has been reached. Looks very equal because the a pawn is pretty weak. And black does have good bishops. Here, Juventin plays takes, takes, and d5. Now knight b3. A3 pawn is being given away. Just like, but there is pressure on e6 though. Now takes takes and bishop e5 so now black can take the pawn but here it's apparently a big mistake it's a very risky choice by Li Tanji. she wanted to regain her material 
So the correct option would have been just to keep the pieces active, defend the weak pawn, develop her king into the middle, and the game goes on with the weakness on e3. But she decides to take it immediately, and rook e3 comes. So Li Tanji's plan is to play bishop c2 and defend the knight because if the knight moves, the bishop hangs. Now Ju Wenjun had a choice here. She could go for knight e1 attacking the bishop or knight d4. Posting an exchange, basically. And uh, here, knight e1 is completely winning. But it's very long, and it's a very long line, and it's difficult to see through. So the line goes, knight e1. Bishop has to stay defending the knight. Now, we can just play rook to d3, attacking the bishop. But then, if the bishop moves, knight hangs. But there is rook c1. But this is still good for white, because white gets the rook in. Rook d8, king f7, and rook d7. Rook d7 looks pretty good here. Is it not winning? Oh, apparently it's not winning because rook takes nine, rook takes pawn. Wow, there is problems. Bishop c2 and the knight would hang. Wow. This is a very interesting language. Bishop c3, this bishop g6, and the black pieces are ready to launch. Bishop is attacked. Bishop can't move anywhere. All the squares are blocked. So this is very difficult to see. So it's a complicated line. Uh, the correct way would be instead of rook d7 check, just to play knight to d3. Attack the rook. And if the rook goes to b1, which seems like uh, the only square for the rook, I mean, you can also come back. Uh, then rook d7 takes the pawn. Rook has to come keep the uh, sort of pin on the king, a discovered attack threat on the king. So rook b1, now rook d7, king e8, you can't take the pawn. That's very important. I mean, if you take the pawn, bishop c2 check and the knight hangs. The only move is rook a7. So it's a very narrow line, which is not what Lee, uh, I mean, Ju Wenjun wanted. So instead of rook, knight e1, she thought for a long time here. She, she took almost uh, 19 minutes, I'm sorry, 18, almost 18 minutes and decided to play knight d4, a safe move. So takes, takes. Knight c6, takes, takes. So there is the weakness on e6 and g7 she can take any time with a check. But it, it is, it's a slight advantage for white. The check, king moves, check, and then the g7 pawn falls. Now can Juvenjun convert this? The e6 pawn is still weak, but it's opposite color bishops. So she uh, is comfortable, but is it winning enough? Li Tanji plays king f8, pawn g4, and now rook c5, bishop f6. It's not comfortable for black. Bishop e4, she holds on. King h2, rook b5, and rook e7, going after the e6 pawn. And now rook b6, which is also fine. And now h4. So white is just gaining space, pushing the pawns forward on, on the king side. And now rook b3. This was an important moment. Looks so lost for uh, black. What can black do even? White's plan is very simple, just to keep pushing the pawns forward. Uh, if possible, f5 as well, and then g6. Just push everything forward. She's at the top. And here, the correct move for black to hold on. There are only two moves here. One is h5. But after h5 takes, the idea is to go rook b2. Now that the pawns are doubled, they're not that dangerous. But this would still be comfortable for white. Now the other option is directly going rook b2, which is also going to be comfortable for white. But after king g3, rook check. If king goes to f4, rook b4. And if king goes to e5, just bishop f3. And if the pawn pushes forward, then we have uh, rook can take on h7, or you can push the pawn because g4 pawn is kind of important. So g5, rook takes h4, defending the h pawn. So this would happen. And if you take the pawn, there is an exchange of rooks, and that would be a draw, opposite color bishops. So king d6 is important. And now black would just go rook f4, a normal rook move, and you take the pawn on h7. Bishop e4, it will still be one pawn up and black king is not comfortable. So this was uh, still difficult, but it was the best chance. Instead, Li Tanji goes for rook to b3. Again, rook b2, bishop can't really take because then the rooks get exchanged. So rook b3 stopping the king from entering, a very normal move. But the problem is now she is going to be down two pawns. Now Ju Wenjun is winning. She can convert this easily because it's two pawns extra. Bishop g4, rook comes to e7. Now bishop f5, just trying to hold things together. Bishop h3, king moves back. Bishop f5, h5. Rook h3, attacking the pawn, h6. 
So somehow trying to close it out, do not allow a pawn break. Rook d3, and now king h2. Rook h3, king g2. Rook goes back, pawn f3. Hiding from the checks, king g3 is coming. Rook to d, uh, rook to d7. Again, you can't exchange rooks. If you exchange rooks, obstacle of bishops, two pawns might not be enough. So bishop comes back, and f4. Now again, rook d5. If you take the rook, there is bishop e4, so you can't do that. It'll be an, it'll be a draw. Now rook goes back, and then bishop f5 comes back, planning rook d7 again. And now just king f2. This was actually a big mistake by Juan Jun. This was Li Tanji's chance to make a draw. She had to play rook d4. Again, taking advantage of this exchange idea. It will still be slightly better for white, but it is holdable. Uh, for example, if you play king f3, then check. And if you play for king e3, also check. King has to go back. And if you play something like rook e5, then the pawn hangs, right? So you can't really defend that pawn. So if the king goes to g3, also check comes. And if you go to h4 again, rook d4. Oh, rook h3 is mate. Wow. So can't go to h4. King has to come back and then this would be a draw because you get the pawn. I mean, still one pawn up, but that's holdable, right? But Li Tanji didn't find that. She had only two and a half minutes on the clock. She played rook check. And after king e3, rook went back. There was still a chance to play rook d3. Rook d3 and then go back to d4. But uh, she didn't see that idea. She went to d6. But now it's a comfortable win for Ju and Jim. She shows very good technique. She plays rook c7, avoiding all those rook move ideas. Now it's not possible. Rook check, king moves, rook goes back, bishop comes back, king moves, king moves. And the plan to win this is by somehow getting this break in, g6 break in, if pawn takes h7. That break will win the game. So she's trying to get the pieces to those exact squares so that the break is possible. She pushes a king away so that when the break comes, the pawn is far away from the king. So king won't be able to stop. Bishop c3, covering the h8 square, very important. After the break, h7, h8, h8 would be covered by the bishop. And rook g8, threatening rook takes bishop. Pawn takes pawn h7, winning. So rook d6, defending it. Bishop e5, rook is attacked. There was also bishop f6, right? Will bishop f6 win? Hmm, looks, looks good. Bishop will have to move. And then g6 is coming. But g6, rook takes bishop, right? Oh, wait. Bishop c2. Can we play g6 here? Hmm, interesting. Rook takes bishop. And if you take there, oh, bishop will take back, yeah? And g7, he'll again play. Wait, g7, what will, what's the plan? Bishop d3. Wow. Black will give up the bishop and hold the rook and game. So bishop f6 wouldn't win. Juvenjun correctly plays bishop e5. Rook is almost out of squares on the 6th rank. It goes to d2, king moves, and it goes to d3, king moves to g4, and now the rook cannot come back. Was there any chance for the rook to stay? For example, rook a6, then rook g7, and where would the king go? King cannot come here because rook takes bishop, so king e8, let's say, and then now bishop f6 comes. Now bishop f6 comes, if the bishop does the same thing as before, let's say c2 or b1, then we have, hmm, how do we win this? Is g6 possible? Still not possible because of that. Rook e7, king f8, rook c7. Where's the win? We need to somehow get f5 now. Let's say bishop goes back to g6. Now bishop d4. Yeah, this would have been a better way to try and hold it. Uh, try and fight. But uh, Litanji goes for the check. Because now after the check, she can't come back. And there is no way to stop rook take bishop or g6. So she goes rook d1, allowing the win. Rook takes bishop and it is over. So with that nice victory, Ju Enjun ties the match with 4-4. Four, four. One win each to both sides. And now four games are remaining in the FIDE World Women's Championship.